suggest that the premises, if there had been weapons found, anybody who was in the house would have been arrested, including Father Chesney. Soon after that, police intelligence indicates that Father Chesney helped his friend and key cloudy suspect once again, this time to evade arrest in a separate operation. The man later left the country. We now know how the RUC handled the matter of Father Chesney. The police ombudsman's report published in August revealed that although a senior officer described him as a dangerous priest, he did not act to arrest him. Instead, the RUC wanted him moved. The senior officer wrote to the Northern Ireland office asking them to intervene and enlist the help of the Catholic Church. William Whitelaw, then Secretary of State, raised the issue of Father Chesney in a meeting with Cardinal Conway, head of the Catholic Church, in December 1972. The Cardinal recorded the meeting in his diaries. Cardinal Conway was disturbed by what William Whitelaw had to say about Father Chesney, and he promised to look into it. Two months later, William Whitelaw and his wife come to visit the Cardinal in his own house on a Sunday afternoon, and this is the section that is quoted by the Ombudsman in his final report. I began by referring to a certain person about whom he had spoken to me. Uh, and then he goes on to say that he had spoken to the superior of Father Chesney, who had challenged him, and he had strenuously denied the challenge. The most he was prepared to admit was that he was sympathetic to the Republican movement. He may have transported some people, but that was all he'd ever been involved in. About what the church After the bombing, Father Chesney moved to Donegal. Cardinal Conway records all of that and shares that with William Whitelaw. The superior, that would have probably been the Bishop of Derry at the time, Bishop Farron, had given him orders to stay where he was on sick leave until further notice. So he, the Secretary of State, seemed to be pleased with this. Father Chesney stayed in Donegal until his death in 1980. He was never questioned about the cloudy bombing. He took whatever information he had to his grave. Because of his link to Father Chesney, one person has remained a suspect. He's the man the priest provided an alibi for, and the police believed it was his car that was used in the unsuccessful attempt to phone through a warning. The police ombudsman has referred to him simply as Man A. Now many of the Claudi families believe Man A may be their last chance to get to the truth. He just disappeared down and that was it. No one followed up or after that. I want him to go and do something about Mali. But would it ever be possible to hear Mali's own account of what role he might have played in Claudi? His name is known to many of the Claudi families, but not his whereabouts. After 40 years, many of the relatives believe he'll never be found. But we began to piece together what's known about him, to try to trace him. Immediately after leaving Northern Ireland, he moved to America, where he was later joined by his wife and child. We found out he'd moved around. He lived first in New York, then Alaska. He then travelled south to Portland, Oregon, and finally to San Francisco. At some point, he and his wife separated and she returned to Northern Ireland. But what did Mané do then? Finally, we had a breakthrough and found his last known address in America. It seemed he hadn't lived there for some time, and her trail went cold. But then we made a startling discovery. He was closer to home than anyone had expected. After tracking man A right across America, this is where our search has finally ended, back here in Ireland. We went to his door to ask him about Claudia and what's said about man A in the Ombudsman's report. We have no evidence against him other than the intelligence referred to in the Ombudsman's report, so we're not naming him or showing his face. It has been suggested, and you're the person that's been identified as Man A in that report. Me? Yes. What was that, man? Oh, I got it, man. I was picked up uh, for a while, for right. a couple of days. Right. But that's what I feel. Yeah. Picked up and released again? Yeah. Yeah. So your name was mentioned because of the fact that you were arrested at the time? Yeah, it was as it was. Yeah. And they were, they were throwing them into a long case after my daughter. Yeah. But yeah. 
We are arrested specifically though about Clary. I don't know, I don't pick up that. Yeah. Well, Thanks for that, sir. Did they, did they ask you about Clary when they had you in? Yeah, they did, of course. Yeah. They did. And were you able to tell them anything then, or? I didn't know that then. Only when I hear just she was in the house. Police were drawn to Man A because of his car. It was the same make and colour as the one driven by the bombers when they tried to issue a warning in Dungiven. Can you remember what car you had back in 1972? Well, the we don't remember that. And the car which came to use like that was simply called the Volkswagen. Right. Volkswagen. Uh, was it an orange Volkswagen? Yeah. Right. What does it make of it, is it? Both right. Right. Yeah. And it seems they saw an orange vehicle, and I guess the. I think that's only one in the North an orange car. And that's why they. Uh, well, I don't know. It, it seems that's what they think. Nobody's not a car to me. And is that what they suggested to you then, whenever they questioned you back then? There was an orange car seen in the yeah. We also asked him about Father Chesney and that alibi. And did you tell them then that you were, on the morning of Claudia, that you were along with Father Chesney in his parochial house? Oh, they might have been. I might have been. So, Father Chesney was a uh, member of ours. Right. Yeah. I don't know, that's 40 years ago. Yeah. There's another little bit here where it refers to Man A again. It says that police assessed that Man A's alibi had been prepared in advance and that Father Chesney was involved in the bombing of Clotty. How did be prepared in advance, Joe, even though they're from? Yeah. We didn't expect them to be going through this kind of. It's a thing, it's something to do with it, not to do with But what did he have to say about the Clotty bombing? If they knew these police were never there, there, if they knew anything about the cabin, they thought, look around Cloudy. They may try and do a look at her. So the other one gets back. I'll take us up with my little over there. Do you think then that the people responsible for Cloudy are in Cloudy? People who planted those bombs live around Cloudy? It could be somebody uh, wayward. Uh, we well, were now trying to watch another area. That's not what we've done. So for somebody local then you feel it was responsible? Yeah, I He said the bombing didn't make any sense and he couldn't understand why three bombs were left in different parts of Claudie. I'm a kid, you would know that if you left the bomb out here, people throw it around like that, throw it around this one. Throw it away from that, they're going to make another one. Yeah, so we didn't know what to do. In terms of and then they got to the name Father Jesse. Father Jesse is part of man that. Yeah. So that yeah. so he'd be doing over from Claudia in. So what he does now. So you don't think Father Chesney was involved at all? I don't think so. Did you know him well? I know very well. This document here, they, they say that there was intelligence at the time to say that Father Chesney was the director of operations in the IRA in South Derry. Do you believe that? Yeah. Oh, chaps. Where are these people? They know. They're the martyr. Oh, chaps. Oh, chaps. And as far as you're concerned, then, you have no questions to answer about what happened in Claudia, and your conscience is clear. My conscience is clear. Nobody from that dirt said that my plan didn't do that. And I don't know why you're focusing on the Just the whole thing doesn't make sense. You don't shop. Man A insists he's innocent. While the police still regard him as a suspect, he's not been questioned since 1972. In 2002, 30 years after the Claudia bombing, the dormant investigation took a significant turn. The police carried out a routine review of the original RUC investigation, but what they found was anything but routine. 